Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise biology topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. This video summarizes what you need to know about topic 2, organization of the organism. First of all, you must understand that a cell is the basic unit of life. Just like how building blocks can be used to make something, a cell is the basic building block of an organism. Let's look at the structure of an animal cell first. It's important to be able to identify the parts of an animal cell and understand what each part or organelle does. This is the nucleus or the control unit of a cell. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and it's where aerobic respiration takes place. The cell membrane controls what substances enter or leave the cell. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance in which all the cell organelles are present. And ribosomes are where proteins are made. Next, we'll look at the plant cell. The parts of the animal cell that were mentioned previously are also present in the plant cell. This is the nucleus. This is the mitochondria. This is the cell membrane. This is the cytoplasm. And these are ribosomes. The additional organelles that a plant cell has are shown in green. This is the cell wall that's made of cellulose. These are chloroplasts that contain the green pigment chlorophyll. This is a vacuole that contains cell sap. Once again, the organelles common to both an animal cell and a plant cell are nucleus, mitochondria, cytoplasm, ribosomes and cell membrane. And we will now look at the functions of these parts of a cell. The nucleus contains genetic material that controls the cell. It stores DNA and coordinates many of the activities that take place within the cell. The mitochondria is the place where aerobic respiration takes place. The mitochondria provides necessary energy for the cell's survival and functioning. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance in which chemical reactions take place. It supports the organelles of the cell. The ribosomes is the place where protein synthesis takes place. There can be hundreds of proteins that need to be made for the cell and it is the ribosome's job to do this. The cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell. It is the outer covering of the cell and it provides protection from its surroundings. Now let's take a look at the functions of plant cell structures. The cell wall is made of cellulose and gives structural strength and support to the plant cell. It also protects the cell. Chloroplasts contain the green pigment chlorophyll and is the place where photosynthesis takes place. So it captures light energy from the sun and it converts it into food for the plant. The vacuole contains cell sap and is used for storage. It also helps support the cell shape. Now we look at the structure of the bacterial cell. As you can see, some of these organelles are similar to those in the animal cell. However, a bacterial cell has circular DNA and plasmids. A plasmid is a small circular DNA molecule which allow bacteria to swap genetic information between them. An organism is made of many cells. So how are new cells made? They are produced by the division of existing cells. A single cell divides to make two cells and these two cells then divide to make four cells and so on. The most basic unit is the cell. Groups of similar cells form tissues. Groups of different tissues make an organ. A group of organs function together to make an organ system. 
cells, tissues, organs and organ systems combine to form a multicellular organism. In addition to the basic cell, an organism has specialized cells which have specific functions. Ciliated cells have cilia or hair-like structures which allow the movement of mucus in the trachea and bronchi. The cilia sweeps mucus up the passages towards the nose and throat where it can be removed. Root hair cells are present in the roots of plants and they help in the absorption of minerals and water from the soil. Palisade mesophyll cells are present in leaves. They contain chloroplasts that help in photosynthesis. Neurons are nerve cells that help to carry electrical impulses from one place to another. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which helps transport oxygen throughout the organism. Sperm and egg cells or gametes are responsible for reproduction. The nuclei of these two cells fuse and lead to the development of an embryo. Next, we'll look at size of specimens. When we look at detailed images on our books, say an image of a cell for example. We know they have been magnified or, be, or made bigger so that we can actually see them. In reality, these objects can only be seen under a microscope. This is a formula we must know in order to determine by how much an image has been made bigger or in other words, its magnification. So magnification is equal to the image size divided by its actual size. Actual size and image size must be in millimeters. If it has been given in any other unit, we must convert it to millimeters. This is an example of where we can use this formula. An image of a leaf is 30 millimeters in size and its actual thickness is 2 millimeters. What is the magnification of the image? So magnification is equal to image size divided by actual size, which is 30 divided by 2, that's 15. Since both image and actual size have already been given in millimeters, there's no need to convert it. And magnification has no units. In case a question has been given with the units in micrometers, we should know how to convert it into millimeters. To convert from millimeters to micrometers, we should multiply the number by 1000. And to convert from micrometers to millimeters, we should divide the number by 1000. So these are the main things to know from Chapter 2, Organization of the Organism. Hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more biology revision videos. Bye-bye.